Hi, Ben here, and we're in the woods today, and I've brought three of my favourite bushcraft axes along, and I thought it'd be a great time to show you the sort of specs, the different sizes, the pros and cons, and also the specifications of each axe, and why you'd want to carry it into the woods for a bushcraft expedition. So the axes that I brought out with me to the woods today are all made by Gransfors Brooks. They're an axe factory out in Sweden. So they're beautiful forged heads and these lovely premium hickory handles. Now this smaller model that I brought with me today is called the Wildlife Hatchet. So that's got a 13 inch handle with a pound in weight head and a three inch cutting edge. So that's great for your sort of craft work. Then we've got the sort of middle of the range axe. This is probably the most popular with the bushcrafters. So this is what we call the small forest axe. So that's got a 19 inch handle, a pound and a half for the head weight and a three and a quarter inch cutting edge on there. And then we've got the bigger brother. This is the real heavy workhorse of the tools. So this is the Scandinavian forest axe, and that's got a 25 inch handle, a two pound head, and the actual cutting edge itself is three and a half inches. So that's the, the biggest of that sort of range of axes. So I think that's the perfect sort of three axes for your sort of bushcraft and woodcraft needs. So we've come a little bit further down the slope in the woodland to where there's this natural clearing and lots more daylight and over the last few years, lots of natural ash regen has shot up and it's really dense in here. So some of these ash trees need thinning out anyway. So perfect opportunity to show you some of these axes being used. So I've brought my personal axes down here. So these are my three that we've just been talking about. We've got the wildlife hatchet, the small forest, and the Scandinavian forest axe. And when you hold them side by side like that, you can really start to see the difference in handle length. Now, obviously we're gonna fell this ash tree. I would be able to use the wildlife hatchet to actually knock the tree over, but because it's much shorter handle and a much lighter head, it's not gonna be the most efficient use of tool. The small forest would totally cope with it, but because I've got this larger handle and heavier head of the Scandinavian forest axe, that's probably gonna be the best tool for the job. Now, obviously if you're carrying an axe like this into the wilderness, this is the kind of axe that you'd take with you on a journey where you've got to do lots of felling, you've got to build a big shelter where lots of timber is required, you've got to produce a lot of firewood, so if you're in a very cold environment, having that heavier head, longer handle is going to be the most efficient tool to use. So, we'll give this Scandinavian forest axe a little test run. Now whenever you're using an axe, before you start and before you even take the cover off, it's probably worth just clearing a little bit of debris from around the tree making sure that you're not going to trip over when it's actually falling. Clear a little bit of scrub. Now ideally we want to fell this as low as possible so that we get the best regeneration from the actual stump itself. So we'll take the mask off and I normally make sure that I put the mask in my pocket because it's very easy to lose. Now the advantage of getting down low like this is I'm immediately going to be safer. I'm not going to cut my knees or my legs. And also the advantage of having the longer handle on the Scandinavian forest axe means that if I do miss, miss the tree or miss the piece of wood I'm striking, the, ha the head is actually gonna bury itself into the soil before it gets near me. So the longer the handle on an axe, the safer it becomes basically. Right, so what I'll do is I'm gonna try and fell it in that direction. So I'm gonna put what we call the bird's mouth in the front of the tree. That's gonna be allowing us to, to fell the tree in that direction. So we'll strike into the tree and this is where that extra weight of the head does the work for us and also having that wider cutting edge more contact with the timber so it buries into the timber very easily so that's our initial cuts going in that way then we're going to come in straight away from this side it's very tempting to angle the axe upwards but it gets quite dangerous because it can glance so try and almost come in sort of 90 degrees and it should shed those fibers in just like that. Once you've done a few more passes like that, you can then put a few more chops in from that same angle. Now we're looking at about a sort of 45 degree angle for our sort of bird's mouth. And you'll notice that I'm using that nice long handle and as I'm bringing it up on the return stroke, I'm sliding my handle down the shaft so that I'm holding the weight of the head so I'm not getting too fatigued and as I throw the axe I allow my hands to slide down that handle and that makes it very efficient and I'm not getting too fatigued. If 
you just hold it near the very end of the handle and swing like this, you're going to get very tired very quickly. Now I'm just going to check the direction. The other advantage of having a long handle on your axe is you can sit your axe into that, that bird's mouth and you can use the handle to dictate the actual direction that it's going to fall in, making sure that the top of the tree doesn't get all tangled up. So I'm happy with that. Because the tree is leaning in that direction, that should be a sufficient amount of timber removed. So we'll go in from the, the, the back of the tree now, clear a little bit of that scrub, and now we want to come maybe a couple of inches above where that other cut was. And we're going to basically create exactly the same cut. So throw the axe in, really using that full length of that 25 inch handle to the best efficiency. Once we've got those fibres severed, we'll come in again, just like so, and then continue that process. Now, once you've put that cut in, you can bury the axe in and you can actually pry, actually use the grain of the tree to help sort of lever those chunks out. And then we want to look at it, we want to make sure we don't cut all the way through that hinge and it's starting to go. Look. Just so that we can do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, I'm now going to be standing for seathering through that hinge. The Scandinavian Forest Axe allows me to take a really nice safe stance. I can work standing up, cut through that hinge, and if I do miss, I'm not going to get in any danger of cutting myself with these sort of feet placed wide apart and the axe is nice and long. Just in comparison, if I was doing the same action with the wildlife hatchet, Basically, if I miss, it's not gonna hit the dirt. There is a real potential of actually hitting my legs or my feet. So longer the handle, the better when you're actually doing tree felling, really. So we'll cut through that. A little bit of tension in there, so be a bit careful that it doesn't spring up. Just like so. And we can place the ax down, then we can lift that sort of uh, base of the tree and just walk it back. So now we've got the ash tree off the stump, but it's still a little bit supported off the ground. This is not a bad idea at this stage to actually start to take lengths of the timber that we want to take back to the workshop. So I'm going to come down here, probably choose this section just above this section of knots, and I'm going to start to use the axe again to actually limb this up. I take a slightly different stance, so I'm standing slightly in front of where the axe is going to be striking, and I'm going to use that full length of the handle and the weight to the advantage to really start to plough that into the, the timber. Again, that three and a half inch wide sort of cutting face allows me to make a lot of contact with the timber at any one time. So I put a few chops in like that. Then we take a different stance. So I move my feet position, and now I'm gonna strike the ax back this way. And then just alternate between those two different positions. So that was the Scandinavian forest axe, and obviously you saw how quickly that worked through that ash. Now you might think, well, surely I'll just buy this big axe and it can do everything. Now the only problem is, if you're taking an axe and you want to do craft work as well as processing wood for shelter building or firewood, this can be a little bit outbalanced because obviously you've got such a long handle. And when you actually start to do, use an axe for craft work, you want to actually start to hold the handle much closer to the head. It's what we call strangling up an ax. And at that stage, this gets really quite sort of dodgy, really. You've got to be very, very careful. If you're, say, carving a tent peg or a spoon on a chopping block, this handle can catch your clothing, it can even catch your body, and then it throws the actual cutting edge off, and you could actually chop your finger quite badly. So, great for big production stuff, not brilliant for craft work. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the axes over now, and I'm going to show you a similar bit of processing with the small forest axe. Now the advantage of this is it will still fell timber and do firewood processing, but having that slightly shorter handle, slightly lighter head, if you have then got to use it for sort of craft work, you can strangle it up close to the head and you've got a much more balanced sort of axe, much better proportions really. So we'll use it for a little bit of uh, sectioning of this and then we'll show you it with a bit of uh, splitting and things like that. So the beauty of this ash 
because it's grown in such a tight sort of dense little patch of, of other trees it hasn't really got many side branches it's already lost them but if we were wanting to take off branches you could sort of slide the axe along the actual stem knocking off any branches that protrude most of the branches are another sort of 10 feet up this tree really um, so it's pretty clean really so this is my small forest axe I've had this for 20 years now and it's still going strong the actual bit is a little bit shorter because I've sharpened it quite a few times but it will do exactly what the Scandinavian forest does but you just have to be a little bit careful because the handle is a little bit shorter so we mentioned before about our leg position so make sure that you're taking a good safe stance and when I'm using this what I'll do if I'm going to be sort of sectioning this timber up when I'm making the swings same as before slide your hand along the handle right to the head itself so when you bring it back up to your body you're taking the weight of the head so you're not going to get too fatigued and we can start to chop through this bit of ash again so even though it's smaller you can see it's quite an efficient tool it's a little bit shorter a little bit narrower so this is only three and a quarter inch wide on the actual cutting edge itself so it means that you would have to work across the log if it was working on a wider piece of timber than this what I might be able to do in this instance because it's above off the floor I'll actually be able to take a backward swing like this so again my legs are in front of where the impact is and it should prevent any break out of the timber then as well just like so beautiful so we've used the small forest just to section a piece of timber now obviously if you're out in the woods and you've used an axe to cut your firewood to length more not more times than not you'll end up with a sloped cut at both ends so it'd be very difficult to stand it on a chopping block and just split as normal so if you've got those kind of axe cut ends to your log it's probably easier to actually lay it down maybe use another piece of firewood to support it up like that and then I'm actually going to use the stump itself as a bit of a backstop and I'm going to use the axe and I'm going to strike ideally through the pith and it should run all the way then. Now same stance, nice wide legs so that make sure that when the axe strikes if I miss it's going to go straight between my legs basically so we'll give it a little wallop. Now ash is a fantastically straight grain timber so we've driven that axe into the actual piece of timber but because the wood is heavier than the axe head itself at that stage it's far easier to just invert the piece of timber and use the piece of timber to actually break itself by just using the axe as a splitting wedge so you can use a block or use the stump whichever you want to use lift both the axe and the piece of wood up and then strike down just like so and that lovely straight timber and that lovely wedge shape that you've got on the Grand Sfors axes this very nice thin bit and then coming up to these really nice gentle sloping cheeks to the axe just work like a beautiful splitting wedge and just force those fibers apart really so we've now got some usable timber so if you're going to be using it for craft work obviously this is green so this is perfect for craft work or if you were going to use it for firewood then obviously you'd split it a bit smaller stack it and dry it and let it let it let it season before you use it on your firewood so another technique that you can use the small forest and the axis for is when you've got a slightly smaller piece of timber or half that you've already split you can actually use a technique for splitting where you lay the axe onto the piece of wood hold the piece of wood and the handle together like so and because of that really nice fine thin uh, bit to the axe that we showed you it will drive into the timber really easily and having that extra length of the handle will just give you a little bit of extra leverage and you can use it like a throw basically and that allows you to get very controlled cuts if you're producing either kindling in a very sort of closed environment like a tent or something like that or if you're trying to produce accurate splits for craft work so this is looking perfect for maybe making a little improvised tent peg so i think i might just split it a little bit more and then we'll do a little bit of axe work so we've split that fairly suitable piece of ash now with no knots in just flattened a bit of that timber to work as a bit of a chopping block and i can start to use the small forest then as a craft axe so I'm getting down nice and low so if I miss the block I'm not going to cut myself 
holding it really close to the head itself to get a good balance. And then you can use the nice wide cutting edge as a good planing tool. So you'll notice I put in feathering cuts on the way up and then I can just slide the axe down to then remove that waste and it works really nicely that sort of combination of that weight of the head and the handle you can pretty much hold it there and it's almost like negative it's like perfectly balanced just at that point so we'll just thin the other way so it's always easier to turn the piece of wood over rather than working from where your fingers are we can start to thin that down so I'm just taking off a little bit of waste material from both sides, but I'm actually going to leave that nice triangular section that we've got to this piece of uh, cleft ash, because that's going to be perfect for our tent peg, just like so. You can see the axe itself, it's not too heavy, so I'm not going to get totally fatigued if I'm using this for a long time, doing craft work and projects. The Scandinavian axes compared to say an English axe are much lighter. Like I say, this is only a pound and a half, so you could use it quite easily. Traditional sort of British axes, they often end up being about two or three pounds, even of the small, the small axes. So this is a much lighter axe. So I'll just take that sharp edge off there. And then we can start to think about maybe making this just a little bit shorter. I'll just take a bit of waste off this end. a little bit more in scale so the axe itself the small forest is totally capable of doing those kind of craft projects but just so that you can compare if I wasn't having to fell the tree in the first place it'd probably be a little bit more comfortable if I use a, an axe that's got a slightly shorter handle so we'll show you the wildlife hatchet now and show you what that will do so as you'll see the actual overall shape of the axe itself and the head is very very similar but just scaled down uh, Lois has actually got an original wildlife hatchet which has got this same shaped handle that's on the uh, small forest axe and the Scandinavian forest axe but they did change it maybe about 15 years ago something like that to this nice sweeping curve now obviously it doesn't match so I know some people are like well I like all my axes to look the same but having this just gentle sweep to the axe handle itself actually is a big advantage what that actually does is because you're going to be mostly using it for craft work you can pretty much hold it anywhere along the handle itself and it doesn't really change how the axe feels when you throw it so it doesn't change the sort of balance of it and it works great um, I mean I've done a lot of traveling around to shows and things like that demonstrating woodcraft and normally the axe that I will always pack in my toolbox is the wildlife hatchet purely because it's a very small handle it will fit nicely in my toolbox and I know that finding a very nice craft axe is often difficult when you go anywhere. Often you can find an axe that's totally capable for splitting firewood and felling trees. But finding something that you can rely on to carve something like a spoon or wooden uh, ware like making tent pegs and stuff, that can be a bit tricky. So this is my sort of favourite little axe to take with me on a trip really. Now the great thing about all the axes that we've demonstrate, demonstrated is they've all got this square pole on the back of the axe. And that's a big advantage if you're taking an axe into the woods because it gives you the advantage that you can then use it as a hammer if you're knocking in pegs but it also allows you to strike the back of the axe either if you're inverting it to split that piece of firewood like we did earlier or if you're actually using it with a mallet to actually do controlled cleaving and things like that so yeah looking for that square pole is a real advantage on an axe so we'll use this little wildlife hatchet just to finish off that tent peg and I want to square off this end for where it's going to be the top much lighter this is only a pound in weight and like I say I can pretty much hold it anywhere along that handle and feel comfortable for most sort of controlled cuts I'll be holding it right close to the head and having this little sort of cut out really allows you to get really nice and sort of controlled cuts with it so what I need to do is I need to start shaping the the one end of the tent peg down almost to a point we never take it to a total point because obviously if it hits a rock in the ground it can peen over and then I'm just going to thin these sides down a little bit you can see how nice and delicate this tool is square that off a little bit 
and then normally we'd use a saw to cut a little notch in there but we haven't got a saw with us so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the axe in a very controlled manner to sever those fibres and then I'll slowly remove a little bit of that waste and that's going to be the notch where our guy line or our bit of rope can sit Thin that down just a little bit. Both sides. So you can see with the wildlife hatchet, I can work very close to my body so I can see what I'm working on and that handle doesn't get, get in the way of my body. It's not gonna catch my trouser leg and then throw the ax off course. So it works really, really nicely for a craft ax. It's always important, the top of the peg, that this cut is sloping back so that when you hit it with your ax or your mallet, that the shock wave doesn't break off this section of timber here. There you go, that's our improvised tent peg that we've pretty much crafted with all three axes. Obviously using the little wildlife hatchet to its advantage of being lighter and a bit more controlled for those finer nuances of actually doing the shaping of the peg itself. But that would be plenty heavy enough. If we were then setting up camp, we could then use the back edge, that pole that we were talking about, to then strike that peg into the ground and fix our guy line. So yeah, pretty great to be able to harvest your own materials and make something that's useful in the camp itself. So I hope you've enjoyed being with us in the woods today and seeing these three axes in use. And hopefully you've gathered enough information so that you can pick the perfect ax for your next camping trip or your next woodcraft project. So please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.